Imagine three different groups having a meeting in the same building at once. Wouldn't that be a chaos? Having people talking at the same time? Some of them won't even have their point head. Wouldn't it be better to have these people split into different rooms? Each group having its own auditorium to chair their meeting? Having the sales inside their auditorium talking about the sales stuff? Marketing inside their marketing auditorium talking about the marketing stuff? And having the ICT talking about their ICT stuff in their auditorium? Just think about it. Welcome to another lesson of Technology for All Academy, an academy that teaches information communication technology for free. To mention but a few, we have Cisco and Microtik series and we'll be doing other vendor series in the future. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to configure VLANs. Before we can configure our VLANs, we need to learn first what is a VLAN, why do we need a VLAN and how do we configure a VLAN. And then according to our topology that we have on the screen, we also go in to configure what we call a VLAN trunking protocol. So before we can also configure VLAN trunking protocol, you need to know also how does it work and what is VLAN trunking protocol. Before I can answer those questions, let me first tell you about what is a LAN. A local area network is interconnection between two or more devices that can share information and resources. In our normal LAN, we have one broadcast domain, meaning when a broadcast message is sent, it will be flooded to all the ports except the port of the sender. And our normal LAN has one subnet, meaning if it is 10.10.1.0 network, it will remain as it is. So coming to VLAN, what is a VLAN? VLAN is like a switch inside a switch. It's like having local area network inside another local area network. VLANs allows us to have more than one subnet on a LAN. A VLAN, we can say it's equal to a broadcast and it's also equal to a subnet because our VLAN help, helps us to reduce the size of a broadcast. And we can also say they help us with security because if you have two VLANs, the one for marketing and the other for ICT, the marketing department traffic won't go to ICT department and the ICT department traffic will never go to the marketing department unless there's a routing protocol that's been implemented, intervillain routing, that in the following video. For now, we're just going to learn how to implement VLANs. So VLANs, they logically group users together. For example, as I've said, if we have our marketing department, and there's a broadcast sent on our marketing department. That broadcast will never go to another network that is outside of the marketing department. So the broadcast will only go to the PCs or the ports that are sent to the marketing department. And the same applies to ICT or sales. If we have, for example, salesperson also send a broadcast message, that broad broadcast message will only go to the ports that are assigned to the sales department. So a VLAN is equal to a subnet or a broadcast. So what is VTP? VLAN trunking protocol. VLAN trunking protocol is used to tell other switches about the VLANs that it knows about. For example, if we implement VLAN trunking protocol, the switch that we give the mode of server will be the one that replicates the VLANs or the switch that we configure the VLANs on will be the one that pass that those VLANs to the other switches. What does it need to pass those VLANs? Firstly, we have to configure the trunk links. We also have to make sure that they are on the same domain. The password is optional, but if you configure the password, we have to configure it on all of the switches. And VTP has modes. We have server mode, transparent mode, and line mode. Server and transparent mode have the capability of configuring VLANs and line mode cannot configure VLANs. Before we can start with our configuration, I will just like to explain what I did on our packet tracer. So on our packet tracer here, we have our laptops. As you can see, the first two are on VLAN 10. We have VLAN 10, laptop 1, VLAN 10, laptop 2. And on the second switch, we have VLAN 10, laptop 3 and 4. And VLAN 20, on the first switch, we have 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 on the second switch. Our laptops, 
we have already configured them with IP addresses. So what's left for us is to assign those laptops the ports on the VLANs that we want them to be in. And here is the access layer and we have the distribution layer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going on my laptop 8 is the one that I'm using for configuration on VLAN 1. As we can see, its IP address, if I can hover over it, it's 10.10.1.1. So without wasting time, let me open it and then we go to command prompt. Then I'll tell that into my distribution switch. Uh, tell that 10.10.1.10. Enter. The password is 123456. Enter. Then we tap enable so that we can go to exact mode. And the password is one two three four five six enter first thing first let's give the command show villain brief so that we can see our villains let me maximize our screen we can see we only have villain one which is our default villain in order to configure our vtp for it to pass our villains we have to first start by configuring our trunk link and to do that let me go to global configuration mode let me give the command do show ip interface brief so that i can see my interface do show ip interface brief so i have gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit 0 slash 2 which i connected to my access switch so i'm going to go into interf those interface and to do that i'm going to give the command interface let's make it range 0 slash 1 to 2 enter so we have to give the command switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q enter and then from there we can give the command switch port mode trunk enter and then we are done configuring the trunk links for our distribution layer switch so what is a trunk link Trunk link is a link between two switches. When you connect the, swi the switches together, you have to configure the trunk between them. And access layer, it's a layer that is connected to an end device. For example, like your PC, your server, your surveillance camera, if you have them, things like that, they are end devices. It's not another switch. So our trunk links are used to pass our VLAN information. Normally our end devices, they don't know anything about VLANs. So we use the trunk links to pass the VLANs between our switches. So now let me type end to save our configuration. Then let's exit. So let's tell net 10.10.1.11. One of our access layer switch. Password 123456. Enter. Then enable. Enter. Password 123456. Enter. Show IP interface brief enter i can see gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 is up so let me go to global configuration mode and then interface gigabit 0 slash 1 enter uh, this switch our access switch is 2960 so we don't have isl on these switches so i can go straight and do the command switch port mode trunk enter then exit and then let's tell that to another access layer switch. The IP address is 10.10.1.12. Enter. Password 123456. Enter. Enable. 123456. Enter. Show IP interface brief. And let's see where it's connected. Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. Let's go to global configuration mode. Give the command interface gigabit 0 slash slash one so that we can access our interface and then we have to give it switch port mode trunk in order to make it a trunk link and with that we are done with our trunk links and then let me tap end so that I can get out so now i'll go into my distribution switch so that i can finish my configuration and to do that we tell net 10 .10 .1 .10. Enter password 123456 then enable enter password 123456 enter configure terminal VTP domain lab test enter as you can see changing VTP domain name from null to lab test our distribution layer switch will pass this name to the access layer switch now that we are done with VTP configuration on this switch, I would like to configure our VLANs and in order to do that, 
I'll give the command VLAN. So we have VLAN 10. Enter. And then let's give it the name. Let's make it sales. Enter. And then VLAN 20. Enter. And name. Let's make it Makiti. Enter. And with that, we have configured our VLANs. We type end. Then show VLAN brief. Enter. Let me maximize it so that we can see clearly. And then as we can see, we have VLAN 10. The name is sales. VLAN 20. The name is market. We don't have ports assigned to 10 and 20. I'm done with the distribution switch for now. So let's exit and let's tell net 10.10.1.11 password 1,2,3,4,5,6 enter show VLAN brief enter. As you can see, it already knows about VLAN 10 and 20 because of our VLAN tranking protocol. Then if we can also give the command show vtp status enter we can see that the version running is version 2 vtp domain name as i told you it will tell the access layers which is about the vtp domain name which is lab test they already know about it that this is lab test and right now the mode is server so i would like to make the mode client and able one two three four five six enter Configure terminal, enter, VTP mode client, enter. And with that command, our switch now is a client. It can no longer configure VLANs, can only pass the VLAN information. Let's try to configure VLAN, Hit enter. And then as you can see, VTP VLAN configuration not allowed when device is in client mode. Right now, I want to assign my ports to the VLANs that we created. In order to do that, let me give the command interface range first Ethernet 0 slash 1 to 10. Enter switch port mode access. Enter. Then I'll give the command switch port access VLAN 10. Enter. Exit. And I'll give the command interface range first Ethernet 0 slash 11 to 24 enter port mode access enter then switch port access vlan 20 show vlan brief enter let's maximize okay and then as you can as we can see right now we have our ports assigned to our vlans and then i'm going to save our configuration in exit then i'll go to 10.10.1.12 so that i can also do the same configuration enable one two three four five six global configuration intervenes range first ethernet zero slash one to ten switch port mode access enter interface Range first Ethernet 0 slash 11 to 24. Switch port mode access. And then switch port access VLAN 20. Enter interface range first Ethernet 0 slash 1 to 10. I also need them to give them their VLANs. And to do that, switch port access VLAN 10. Enter. Do show vlan brief and then as we can see our ports are assigned to the vlans so with that let me type end and then write to save our configuration then exit okay let me close it and close my pc so right now let's see if we can pin 10.10.10.3 okay see if we can ping it ping 10.10.10.3 enter which is on another switch as we can see we are able to get there and then let's see dot two we are able to get there dot four we are able to get there which is also on another switch and then let's see if we ping 10.10.20.1 which is on the same switch let's see if we get it as we can see we are not getting there request timeout okay control x control c and then let's ping 20.2 which is on also on the same switch 
and you can see that we are not getting the control c so it proves our point that vlan is equal to a subnet or a broadcast domain we've reached the end of our lesson hope it was informative and if you found it informative please share it with someone you think will also benefit from it and please don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when we drop another lesson with that let me love and leave you have a nice day thank you